wanted to go ahead and do a go live. Oh, perfect. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the replay. Today what I want to cover, basically what 15 owners wish they knew before they got a Boston Terrier. Just some things that surprised them. And be sure to stay till the end because I'm going to share with you what kind of surprised Emily and I before we got Bella, our Boston, who decided to conveniently jump off my lap whenever this started. Hey everybody, welcome to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Doing my very first go live and be sure if you're someone who wants to learn more about Boston Terriers, learn what it's like to be an owner, hear expert interviews, as well as connect with other Boston Terrier lovers just like yourself, be sure to hit subscribe. Now today what I want to cover are 15 things these owners wish they knew before they got a Boston Terrier. The very first one, let me pull it up here, was Teresa. And what she said, I wish I knew how cuddly and sweet and lovable they were. I would have gotten one 20 years ago. Love my Boston. And she has a Boston rat mix. So yes, absolutely. Boston Terriers are super cuddly. If you've watched any of my videos before, I've always mentioned how, you know, Bella is right by my side. And then she likes to go over there whenever I'm shooting videos. So if you're getting a Boston Terrier, be sure to have someone that's going to be right by your hip. Unless they're taking a nap, which they will do often. And as the sun is moving about the earth, your Boston's going to follow that little sunbeam all throughout the house. Next up, we have Vicky here. And she says they're very per persistent and some would say stubborn. Yes, Boston Terriers can be stubborn. And whenever I polled people within the Boston Terrier Society Facebook community, the overwhelming response is always, yes, their Boston Terrier is stubborn. For instance, if I'm trying to get Bella to do something, like I'm saying her name, she pretends like she doesn't hear me, but then all of a sudden, as soon as I like open a treat bag, she's right there by my side. Oh, thanks for the thumbs up. I can't see your guys' comments, which I want to see. I'm trying to pull up now. Let's see. All right, got it pulled up now. So there's Vicky. Now, Mariana, she said to stock up on gas masks. I'm kidding. The best thing we have done to add to Zoe is to our family. So getting a Boston Terrier has been really beneficial for her. And I've mentioned this previously, you know, Boston Terriers do have terrible gas in general, right? And it could be because of their diet. It's also because of that air that they breathe in. And yesterday's video, I talked about, you know, some reasons not to get Boston Terriers. Now, don't let gas be the reason not to get a Boston Terrier. If you love them for everything else, you, there are special diets that you can put them on. Um, there was an instance, and doing a shout out to Ian Debo. He is dead set on doing a raw diet, saying that, that that will help your Boston Terrier when it comes to its bad gas. So that's something that you guys can check out. Honestly, it's, well, with Ian asking me whether or not I've gotten Bella on the raw diet, it's because I think it's too complicated. I'm not sure I haven't done any research into it. If you guys think it's easy, put it in the comments below, like how you got started, because I'd like to learn just to see what you guys uh, say. All right, next is Kim. Oh, thanks, Kastner. Happy 4th of July to you as well. So the comments do pop up here on the screen. All right, so this one's Kim. That they are the boss and that they like to steal the blankets and they also like to snore well, outsnore her. I wouldn't change my mind about the breed, though. Uh, it's a dog that I love. The Boston Terrier is such a lovable companion, and I don't know what I'd do without my Luna. So, absolutely. And this kind of hits home for Emily and I. Whenever we got, or not whenever we got, whenever we had our daughter, Sophia, Bella had ended up kind of nipping her forehead whenever she was around, I think, at nine months old. She had be pulled on Bella's skin. We, went, we talked to the vet about it, what we should do, and he basically told us, you know, you either need to train your dog or get rid of your dog. So at that point, you know, Emily and I were considering whether or not to get rid of Bella, and I, I couldn't do it. We went ahead and followed some of Caesar's videos because we're cheap. We just watched some of his videos to see what he had to say, and we implemented some of the things that he mentioned, and she's been trained ever since, and it's been great. We haven't had any issues with our kids. That was the only time 
and it was because Sophia had pulled on her. But we had to, at that moment, decide whether or not to keep her. And, I mean, at that point, there's no way I could have gotten rid of our dog, who we've had for, at that point, eight years. So thanks for sharing that, Kim. Next is Megan and her reason that they take a while to come out of their puppy stage. Mine was about five when she finally calmed down. I think she calmed down just due to age and the fact that her daughter was born. So instinctively, she knew that she had to be more gentle. Yeah, whenever I think back of Bella, I want to say it took her probably around year two before she started calming down. I can't remember specifically. What's funny, I went ahead and asked some other people in the Boston Terrier Society Facebook community. I did a little poll there on when did their Boston Terrier calm down. I would have to say the overwhelming majority was, LOL, they never calm down. But in my experience, now that Bella's 10, she is very calm. All right, next we have Randy. And he says, I grew up with Boston Terriers and when they pass gas, that's something you don't forget. Shake my head, just wow. LOL, they're very smart dogs, but at the same time, they're so hard-headed. Okay, whenever it comes to hard-headed, kind of previously in that comment that I said where Bella, you know, I'm trying to get her out the door or something, she won't move, but if I barely open a treat bag, she can hear it. That's that hard-headedness. Um, they'll give you looks that can melt your heart and looks that will make you feel guilty like you did something wrong. They snore loud, pass gas, and they sleep it's a bad combination they're a lot of fun i wish i had more so with that as far as the guilty looks i remember one time i came home me and sophia and it's in one of these videos i'll have to put it up in after this is over so you guys can check it out in the show notes but i come home from visiting emily at work sophia and i walk in and bella has tore up the entire living room i mean there is trash everywhere and you know, you can't, your Boston Terriers are very sensitive. So if you yell at them, you feel bad. But I mean, the trash was literally everywhere. And Sophia ended up picking up Bella's poop in the process. It was terrible. So they are a sensitive dog breed. And you're going to feel bad if you yell at them. Thanks, Randy, for that one. All right, now we have Cheryl. I love my Boston Terrier with all my heart. I didn't realize that they will munch on anything on the ground. They're about one and two now. I bet you think they I bet you think their names are leave it, drop it, and that's no. Yes, whenever they're in their teething stages, I mean, yeah, like she said, one to two years, they're gonna get done sooner than that. But Bella, she had chewed on um, fancy shoes. I remember Emily's sister came over. We had to buy like a hundred and twenty dollar pair of high heels. We also had to buy another pair of a friend's high heels. I don't know how much those were. We had just bought a computer and one of the cable connectors you know plug it in and everything Bella chewed that up I mean literally like three days after we bought it which is funny I'm somebody who doesn't like to buy you know the insurance afterwards this is whenever Best Buy was open so we went into Best Buy and they're like yeah you want to pay $50 for the insurance I always thought it was a waste of money but I went ahead and got it because we got a fancy computer and Bella tore that up thank goodness because that saved us $85 so when they're in their young teething stages you definitely want to pick up everything off the ground that you want to keep Right, and now, Tracy. I've had my a Boston in my life uh, since she was four. So out of 54 years of having them, I'd say how difficult it is when I had to travel without them. She said hers suffered from extreme separation anxiety, wouldn't eat, pace the house, looking for me, even then staying with family um, and otherwise. That was tough for her. So in general, what I've seen whenever I've talked to other Boston Terrier owners was, yes, their Boston does or has had suffered from some sort of separation anxiety. And we've experienced this, experienced this with Bella. She doesn't have it anymore. It was really whenever she was in her, well, whenever we moved to the new house and she was in her cage because we were keeping her in her cage. That sounds terrible. Keeping her in her kennel whenever we would leave to go for work and everything. But she ended up losing a lot of her teeth because she was gnawing on the metal cage. So Boston Terriers can have separation anxiety and I am gonna have uh, someone come on. They've agreed to do an interview and I should be having that out in the next three weeks. I haven't interviewed them yet, but we're gonna be talking about separation specifically in Boston Terriers and what you can actually do. Um, hey, Jenna. 
And I think that'll be great for everybody who's getting a Boston Terrier or has one to help deal with that separation anxiety. And that was Tracy. Now on to Sean. So I wish I knew about their hip problems um, whenever they were or whenever they get older. I don't know specifically about their hip problems, but as far well with Bella, as far as their knee problems, they do have knee issues. What I would say with that is you just want to be monitoring it. So whenever you go do your annual checkup with your vet, talk to them about it, you know, every single year, probably after they hit the age of six. And that way it's monitored. So if something does happen, they can catch it early. Thanks, Sean. Now on to Jackie. Be prepared to play 24 seven. She had her bed taken over. Um, be tickled when your Boston guards you when you take a shower. So from this one, what I really wanted to pull out is, it's funny, a number of other Boston Terrier owners I've talked to, I shared a post of Bella camping out, you know, by the bathtub whenever we're taking showers. And it seems like every Boston does this. So be prepared for that. Bella doesn't do it as much now as she did whenever we lived in our apartment. She would always be right there. No matter who was taking a shower, she wanted to jump in right there. And lately though, she's just getting kind of lazy with her old age and likes to lay in her bed 24 seven. Tammy, reverse sneezing. So this freaked her out 18 years ago with her first, three Boston later, and many years when people are over and go, OMG, what is wrong with your dog? Is it okay? Yep, just give her a second to relax, LOL, but wish she had knew this prior so she didn't freak out. So if you're not familiar with what a reverse sneeze is, it's like, Bella, come here, Bella. Bella, dude. come here, Bella. Come here, Bella, dude. come here. Come here, Bella. Come on, Bella. Up, up, up. Let's go. Come on, Bella. Up, up. Well, she's not going to jump up. Come on, Bella. Let's go. Come here, Bella. Okay. Well, she's not jumping up. But with a reverse sneeze, basically, it, it sounds like they're choking a little bit. And it's not a problem unless it's something that you've never seen before in your Boston. And then they start having it really often, like daily or hourly, something of that nature. Just because it could be either mites in their nose. It could be some type of environmental issue. Maybe there's some type of chemical in the air that's causing that. But in general, Bella will get about two to three reverse sneezes. And I've done a video about that. I'll be sure to put it in the show notes below um, after this is over so you guys can check it out and what to do. But essentially, we just hold her sides and that helps calm her down because um, that's all it is. They just need to calm down and relax. Another thing that could cause this is extreme temperature drops. So I've heard of other Boston Terrier owners going outside and their dog does it anytime it's cold or if your Boston eats too fast, it can also cause a reverse sneeze. So be prepared for that. All right, Lisa, how much they like to chew during the first few months and how smart they are. So I think we covered that one. Yes, be sure in you know, that first one to two years, I would make sure you, you hold everything, uh, place it up in a high area just so they don't chew on it. Sandra? Yes, the gas. Covered that one. And then Shay, that they work better with a friend and they have separation anxiety, but I'll still get them over and over. So looking back, obviously Emily and I just have Bella, the one Boston Terrier. We've talked about this over the years, but with us going to school and then, you know, just life happens, we haven't gotten another Boston. But I think in the very beginning, had we got another Boston, it would have really helped Bella whenever she did have separation anxiety. So whenever we were leaving from work, she would have somebody to play with. Now I would say this, if you are planning on getting a separate, a second Boston, I would do one first, have it for you know a year where you're able to train it, basically have that Boston your, as your guinea pig. And then whenever you have your second Boston, it's easy to train because it's picking up on the habits of your older Boston. Plus you've been around the road, you know how to train a dog. So otherwise, if you get two at the same time, there's a good chance that it could go off in different directions. All right, Samantha, the anal glands. Yes, this is something Emily and I have just discovered. And if you're not familiar with it, dogs have anal glands right at the, you know, you got their little booty and then two little anal glands. And those can become enlarged and they seep out. I think it seeps out through the booty, but apparently it smells like a dead skunk. That's how bad it is. We thought Bella had one, um, but it just ended up being just kind of a bump. 
but we looked into it, did the research. Like, there's a way you can do it yourself is trying to release the anal glands. Emily looked into that. I was, I was not for that, but luckily we didn't have to. But just know that they do have them. They can come and become enlarged, and it smells like a dead skunk, apparently. So those are the 15 things that those Boston Terrier owners wish they knew before they had gotten to Boston. One thing I wanted to mention was the shedding. Whenever Emily and I decided to get Bella, one of the driving factors was we were looking for a dog that didn't shed. And mainly because I grew up with a bunch of different dogs. My mom had Rottweilers, Bull Mastiffs, Rat Terriers, uh, Husky at one time. We had a Dalmatian at one time. Yeah, my mom had a ton of different dogs, you know, all at different stages within my life. And I just didn't like dogs, you know, you go to work and you have hair all over you. I didn't like that. So Bella, we decided to get a shed less dog. That's what was, you know, online at the time. This was back in, you know, 2009, whenever we were doing the research and we thought they didn't shed at all, but they do shed. It's very minimal. I mean, you know, if I was to rub my hand across Bella right now, you'd see some hair, but otherwise um, it's not a lot. So just keep that in mind. They do shed. So they're not a dog that doesn't shed at all. So that was all I had for you guys. As far as some of the questions um, that popped up, so it seems like Gina, she says, we are getting a Boston Terrier. Our pup was born last night actually, but my dad is getting cold feet and somehow thinks Boston's are the size of boxers. Can't wait to get that though. So yes, no, Boston Terriers are not the size of boxers. Come, come here, Bella, Bella, come here. Get in my lap, let's go. Let's see if I can actually get Bella. Lately, now that she's getting older, whenever I try to pick her up, she it hurts her, so I don't like to do that. Come on, Bella. Come on, come on up. Here we go. So, yeah, I mean, if you look at the breed standards, like Bella here is 23 pounds, but the breed standards, they can be anywhere from basically 10 pounds to 25 pounds. Um, Cindy here, she says, my Boston is eight months old and is manic. My other Boston had to put down at eight. Sorry to hear that. Because of cancer, um, she was a rescue. I heard her bark one time. Gus is crazy. So, well, sorry about that. That's awesome that you have an eight month old, but it's manic. No, I'm not sure what, uh, I'm not sure what that means. Just going crazy, I'm assuming. So I guess that's another tidbit as far as zoomies. If you're not familiar with that, Google it. If you're thinking about getting a Boston Terrier, this is something that all Boston Terriers do. Bella doesn't do it as often now as she did in the past, but basically Emily and I could set our clock to it at 9 p.m. at night, every night, Bella would run from room to room, just she would run, freeze, and then run again, freeze, and run again, freeze. And this happened for years. Now it's very sporadic. Like if we're outside playing, she'll do it sometimes, but it's not like it was um, whenever she was younger. So, all right, well, that and our, that's all the questions that I have. Otherwise, uh, until next time, life is better with a Boston. I hope you guys have a great 4th of July, and thanks for getting on here. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Oh. And check out the show notes because I've got those videos for you. And be sure to like and subscribe. Talk to you guys later. Bye.